Oh my goodness, what a state. <laughs> you know, sometimes you look in some mirrors and you think you look okay, then you're looking at another one and you think, oh no, not so good. And I'm looking at myself here now thinking, oh my goodness, what a state. Anyway, I was out in the garden um, and um, I thought, I went to a garden centre actually a couple of weeks ago and I sort of, I'm not really a, a great gardener, um, but it sort of inspired me a little bit and I thought, oh, I'm just going to actually plant a little mini menopause type herb garden and grow a few things that um, would be beneficial to sort of eat, to drink and, and to help with menopause symptoms. So that's what I've been doing all day and I've got a few things and I've actually had to write notes this week as well because for some reason in the last few days my menopause brain has just gone to complete mush. So do forgive me <laughs> but basically so what I've been doing, I've, I've planted, I've got peppermint in the garden um, and we've, uh, I th you know that's very cooling, it's used for like good for digestion so I thought I could grow a little bit of that and it's fairly easy to grow so I thought I'd go with that. Valerian um, is good for, you've probably seen valerian, it's in um, lots of natural sleeping remedies, it's very good for calming you and if you feel anxious and helping with sleep problems, so I'm going to have a go at growing that. Um, sage, I think we're all familiar with sage, again fairly easy to grow hopefully, uh, for your hot flushes actually helps to cool the blood, so I'm trying that. Red clover, um, that's pretty, those lovely little uh, red flowers that grow, hopefully they'll grow. Um, they, they, red clover's got something called genistein in it, which is similar, it's a plant hormone, which is very similar to our human oestrogen that we have, so good for boosting oestrogen levels. And then something that I did a post on a couple of weeks ago is called um, purslane, which is actually a weed. Um, but it grows apparently very easily and, and quite quickly, but it's also edible, you can eat it, and it's very rich in um, calcium, magnesium and omegas. So I just thought if I could grow that and wash it and, and put it in with my salad and eat it, it might, it might be uh, an alternative, just something a bit more leafy sort of things to add to the salad. So that's what I'm starting with and that's what I've been doing all day, um, so hence why I'm looking I could have been dragged in by the cat. Um, but the other thing that was going on with me this week in, in the, at home was we had to have our electricity turned off. And we had trouble with the power for, for a little while now. And it came to the stage where the electrician said, look, you've got to have it turned off, it's not safe. So, and, and then he said, it's got to be turned off for two days, which threw me into complete and utter panic um, because the thought of not having electricity for two days just like, you know, what, what do you do? Um, because our house, it's literally, we've got electric cooker, um, no hot water, no internet, couldn't charge the phone, uh, no cooking, obviously. Um, so it was, it was a bit of a, a panic mode that I went into. But when I got used to the idea, I calmed down a little bit and, and got used to it all. I actually quite enjoyed it. I mean, during the day, it wasn't too bad because I was out and I was busy and I was working and doing things. But coming home in the evening, um, it was like normally it was you know we're always busy we're checking our emails we're watching the tv we're cooking or whatever so i had all of this time um and it was almost like i'd been on a little mini retreat after after it was all over um because it was so relaxing we sort of uh, had a stroll down to the pub had a, a pub meal came back we read we talked um and we watched um, we, um played card games and things like that so we had a really nice relaxing couple of days and by the end of it i was like it almost like I'd been on a little mini retreat for a couple of days and I'm sure I slept better as well because normally in bed at night I'm either checking my emails or I'm on my iPad watching Netflix or something like that um, so it was really really relaxing and I'm thinking it should be compulsory they have to have electricity turned off two days a week just so you can like de-stress get out of the rat race and just calm down but I mean I couldn't live like it forever but it's not something that you would do voluntarily I don't think either but it was nice and I enjoyed it but hey ho back, back into the real real world now anyway today's chat I thought I would do on menopause myths um I was going to call it the top 10 menopause myths and then I found another one so it was like top 10 plus one so sort of the top 11 basically I suppose you would call it um and these have come about because I've, they've made it to my list because they are the things that I get asked most often, things that I get emails about or private messages about or things that are in articles a lot, they, they are the most popular ones. So um, I, I put them on the list. And if I can just say that 
before before I go on that menopause is a very individual journey we're all different um, we experience it differently for some of us just breeze through it and for others it is a little bit more of a challenge so no two menopauses are the same basically um, but the more facts you have that you know the better you are able to deal with it I think so let's just have a look um, what the top 10 11 <laughs> sorry are so the first one is we stop producing estrogen and i've had to like i said i've, I've had to make notes here because my, my brain has gone all all wonky this week so the first one is we stop producing estrogen now this is a um a, a yes and a no answer because basically the estrogen that we know is actually made up of three different estrogens and collectively we we call them estrogen so one estrogen that we have which um is the dominant estrogen is called estrone um sorry estradiol <laughs> I got that wrong got my cards in the wrong order it's called estradiol and it is the um it's the most dominant hormone estrogen in our body before we reach menopause um and uh, it's produced by our ovaries and uh, after we've reached menopause the most dominant the most prominent one is one called esterone um, and th this is also secreted by the ovaries but when we are post menopause it's actually converted from a hormone called androstyndione uh, and it is androstyndione which, which converts it into estrone so basically that that is it's no longer secreted by the ovaries but it's actually goes into our bloodstream via the adrenal glands and some fat cells mainly the fat cells in our abdominal area so although we've lost that potent um estrogen estradiol we are still producing it in small amounts in our from our adrenal glands and our fat cells and that one is called estrone okay the other one um, is estriol. Now, estriol is produced um, when you're pregnant. It's secreted from the placenta, so that doesn't really affect us too much at, at, at this stage of our lives. So the two most important ones are the estradiol and the estrone. So estradiol we lose completely, and the estrone is the one that we um, is produced by our adrenals and our um, fat cells, basically. So although we do lose, lose estrogen, um, we still have a little bit amount going on um, in, in our body it's certainly nowhere near as strong as it used to be in our reproductive years but we do have a little bit going on and it's really important as well to look after your adrenal glands because it's quite common to get adrenal fatigue and we don't even really know about it so um, look after your adrenal glands we'll perhaps talk about that in, in another video um, that we're doing in more detail um, because these are the glands that really now take over producing what estrogen it can so it can make a huge difference to menopause symptoms if you look after your adrenal glands um, next one number two is you don't need contraception well, if you're in perimenopause, if you're still having periods, no matter how irregular they are, you are still fertile. So you will need to use contraception unless you uh, want any unexpected little surprises popping up, which has happened to a few ladies on our site. I know that they've told me about it. So if you have not reached that 12 month marker of not having a period, it means you are still fertile and you can still get pregnant. Um, so, but once you've reached menopause and you've, you've, you've gone for your 12 months without a period or 24 months, if you're under 50, don't forget, um, you don't, you don't need uh, contraception. Some of you may find that you are taking HRT and contraception at the same time, because if you're taking HRT in your perimenopause years, um, then you will need contraception because HRT does not act as a contraceptive. So you will need both there. Um, and the other thing, if I can just say here, is that HRT does not make you fertile again. I've had a couple of ladies ask me this. Um, th they they left it quite late, and that they'd also reached menopause at a fairly young age, and they wanted to have another child. And they were under the impression that if they took HRT, it would make you fertile again. Just to let you know, it does not do that. Once you've reached menopause, you're post-menopause, you've run out of eggs, you're no longer fertile, and HRT will not correct that. Obviously, IVF treatment is an option for that, but that's another road that you can go down if that's you. Um, number three, there is no upside to menopause. Menopause is all doom and gloom. Well, yes, it does seem like that, doesn't it, sometimes, and it is a bit of a long journey, um, and symptoms seem to go on and on and on, never-ending. Um, 
but they do get better if, if you're in the stage of menopause at the moment where um, you, you know it, it, everything is so intense and you've got loads of symptoms going on one after another and you don't think there's any light at the end of the tunnel there is you just got to bear with it you know you have your good days you have your worst days and you have your sort of slightly better days but it does get better um, on the positive side obviously we've got no more periods once we're post menopause and we don't have to worry about that but while we're waiting for this menopause monster to get off our back and disappear, it's really important to keep to a healthy lifestyle, make sure that you eat healthy foods, make sure that you exercise, do take the time to exercise, lead a healthy lifestyle. There's also supplements that you can take if you're not taking HRT, look at taking various supplements for hot flushes. I think what we'll do is next week, I was just thinking about this earlier when I was doing my gardening, um, I will um, put a list together of the more effective natural treatments, ones that are very popular that seem to work for most of you for various symptoms. So. I know we've covered this before on, on the Facebook page, um, but it's always nice just to have a recap, just to go over things so we can actually sort of look at them. And just, again, maybe a top 10 or something of, of um, things that are good for, for various um, menopause symptoms. But the better informed we are, I think, the better, the more that we can make informative choices. Um, symptoms, they can be quite challenging. And also, it's, you know, sometimes you just feel like you're on your own when you're dealing with all of this. And if you're in the house, it's very likely that you're, you're not with anybody that uh, um, can relate to you. Obviously, your husband or your partner won't be able to relate to you. Kids certainly won't be able to re relate to you. So if you've got a good circle of friends around the same age, it's really great just to be able to talk about it. Because I think when you put something out there in the universe, it sort of seems a lot more manageable doesn't it if it's sort of going on in your head and you're mulling over things and it seems to be a bigger problem um and i think also this facebook page where, where we, we share a lot of things on here um and i think no matter how small it is i think there will always be somebody on here that will relate to what you're thinking about in your head somebody else will be experiencing this as well without doubt it does help you to keep your sanity in check somewhat i think so you can always get on here if you're worried about anything just sort of put a post up on here and I can guarantee somebody will, will talk to you about it. <clears throat> so there's a lot you can do, you know, you can just sort of, um, having the right attitude, the more you know about it and, and having the right attitude, I think helps you deal with it a lot better. I know some days it can be hard and it's easy to say that, but the more you know, I think the more you can control it rather than it controlling you um, and just accept the fact that some days you'll be good and some days will be bad and, and that's it. Next one, um, HRT is dangerous. Well, I think this is quite a big subject and I think we could probably do a whole separate video on this all by itself with HRT, different types of HRT before menopause, after menopause, bioidentical hormones, all of that. We could actually maybe do a whole video on that, but we'll just touch on it briefly now here because I know a lot of you do worry about it. Um, and yes, there are risks with HRT, as there are with many things in life. I mean, anything has got a certain amount of risk attached to it. In the short term, um, the medical profession say five years, eight years, it, it is okay for you to take HRT. Um, and if you take it at the right time, if you time it right in your menopause journey, hopefully it should see you over the worst of your symptoms so when when your symptoms are, are most intense um, if you can take it during that period of time then it should help you through so have a chat with your doctor about that um, and see what he thinks because it can give relief or it does give relief from many symptoms such as hot flashes mood swings aching joints all, all of those common symptoms of menopause hrt will help you with it does slightly raise the risk of breast cancer and ovarian cancer. Um, it does not increase breast cancer, but what it may do is promote the growth of cancer cells that are already there. Um, and also if you're overweight or if you drink too much, then there's a risk with that as well. But it's a, it's a personal choice at the end of the day. There's no right or wrong. You've got to make the decision. You've got to decide if it's right for you. If the menopause symptoms are having a, an impact on your life, if you're finding the quality of your life is being affected just too much, then it's worth thinking about. It's worth talking to your doctor about because it can make a huge difference. 
Um, and according to Dr. Heather Curry, who's the, the chairman of the British Menopause Society, she believes that it has more benefits than risks. Um, but if I can just say, HRT it doesn't stop menopause and it doesn't delay menopause. That, that's not the right way to look at it because you can't stop and start menopause. It does, that's not how it works. You don't turn it off and turn it on again. What it does do is it, it will uh, alleviate your symptoms for the time that you're on it. So if you're taking it for five years, then during those five years, you will not have any symptoms. When you come to stop taking it, then you may have some symptoms return but hopefully you will like i said you'll be over the worst of it and you will just have to deal with the the aftermath basically of the of some of the symptoms um but think about it have a chat with your doctor if you're sitting on the fence about it and if you're not sure whether it's right for you what i would say is don't take it and then just sit and worry every day about menopause because it defeats the whole object if you're taking it but you you are it's just worrying you too much um then um don't, don't take it because it defeats the whole object i've just had uh, a lady say i took hrt for 15 years off and on and it did it did help but each time i came off uh, the flushes came back yes they will i mean again hot flushes that's the next question i think coming up i think hot flushes they do vary and um that, like I say, they're not going to stop straight away. I mean, my mum has, uh, she's 84 and she still has the odd hot flush, but it's the intensity, that time that you take them during, the time you're taking HRT during those sort of five or six years that you're taking it, it can actually minimise them. And they will, or they may come back after you stop taking it, but at least you've had a break from them for a few years. So um, that's how it goes, you know, basically. Next one is menopause symptoms are just physical. Um, most of the symptoms that we hear about are the physical ones, aren't they? Like, like the, um, the hot flushes or, or the aching joints or um, the mood swings or, 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 or all of those, the weight gain. And we don't, you know, when we enter menopause, we sort of say oh, menopause, we all just think, oh, it's a couple of years, have a few hot flushes, end of. But if only we knew, you know, hindsight's a wonderful thing, if only we knew then what we know now, uh, it would have helped us. But it can, you know, it can bring quite unexpectedly this emotional change in us as well, which we don't always connect to menopause. Like low moods, loss of motivation, anxiety, sleep disturbances, all those emotional problems which can cause us, it can have, a, have an impact on us, you know, and it's important to be aware of them and it's important to to discuss them as well because I think it's unexpected to you and it's unexpected to your partner as well at the same time and if you can keep the communication lines open um, because you're unaware what's happening to you if you can talk to your partner about it he's obviously got no idea what's going on you've got you don't know how you're going to be reacting from one day to the next and if you can actually almost remove yourself from yourself as it were when you're talking about it and just sort of say to your partner I've got no idea what's happening to me either be on the same page about it it might sort of defuse some of that tension that's going on between you which I know can happen sometimes so it's very easy to get defensive when somebody's attacking you for something or you feel like they're attacking you if you're in a low mood um, it's, it's easy to get very defensive about it but if you can just sort of change your, your position on it and just sort of almost sort of be together on it. It, it could help um, diffuse the situation a little bit for you, maybe. Um, next one, m number six, is menopause makes you fat. <laughs> well, I think we, we'd all agree with that uh, at some stage or another during our menopause journey, but it, it does, menopause does coincide with a certain stage of our life when our metabolism starts to slow down um, and we get a reduction in our muscle mass as well. And we will also find that, that we need less calories now as well to maintain the same weight. Um, so try smaller portion sizes or try using smaller plates. So instead of having, you know, your normal size dinner plate with just a small amount on it, which, you know, psychologically you probably still feel hungry afterwards, try a smaller, probably a nine inch size plate, like a side plate, which will look fuller um, and uh, make you think you're still eating enough. So that's one way uh, of, of that. And the fund this fundamental shift that we've got going on with our hormones as well, it does mean that our fat is redistributed from our, our hips and our thighs 
to our middle section so we sort of our, our waist thickens and we lose the the curves that we once had um, so it's, it's important to exercise and make sure that you include weight lifting exercises and weight resistance exercises because what this is going to do is it's going to strengthen your muscles um, and the stronger your muscles are, the more energy that they need. Because basically your muscles are continuously moving, continuously vibrating in the body. They don't stop, whereas fat doesn't move at all, it just sits there. Um, but muscles move, and the stronger they are, the more energy they need to move. And they get that energy from your reserve energy, from your fat supplies, so you're burning more fat. Uh, even when you're sitting down doing nothing basically so it's very important um, if you've gained weight which many of us have during the stage of life to make sure you do maintain exercise and do the right exercises and eat smaller portions as well menopause can mean the end of your sex life um, well I think many of us feel like this at some stage or another during the menopause journey for others I, I know that it goes completely the other way um, and it does it, it, it can have an effect on you, um, not through the whole of the menopause, but at certain stages it can have an effect on you. Um, but there's nothing to stop you enjoying a, um, a good, healthy sex life through your 50s, 60s, 70s and beyond, if you want to, basically. Um, it, our sexual desire can be affected by menopause. It, 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 we can, it can be uncomfortable, it can be painful due to dryness. Our arousal can be dis diminished because of hormones fluctuating. And we can be concerned about our body image as well. You know, if we feel that we're putting on weight, we've got more wrinkles, we, we feel a little bit less confident. Um, but a lot of that is all in our head. We're very hard on ourselves as women. You know, I think we give ourselves pretty much a hard time and we overthink things an awful lot. Um, but you can get your mojo back if you want to. There are lots of things that you can do. I think trying to tune into your positive emotions. Actually, you know, the mind is a very powerful thing. And if you can actually set some side of time, uh, set some time aside to be together um, and just try to reawaken your senses, basically. Because if you think our senses are um, touch, smell, what are they? Taste, hear, hearing and sight. Those are our five senses. And they're very easy to become, because we live in such a busy world, we're bombarded with things all of the while, we're, we're constantly being shown things or, you know, and our, our senses can become desensitized. So just take a moment, you know, to, to actually focus on, you know, if you're eating something, for example, sort of taste the food, the, the flavor, the texture, or if you're putting body lotion on or, you know, feel your skin and, and just sort of take a moment in your day just to reconnect with yourself um, and also make time for each other you know be, uh, do your date nights do your romantic baths and um, make make time for each other there's actually a good section in the book here in the, the menopause secret I know this actually when I show you things on here it's the wrong way around it's like, like a mirror image but in here we've got a section on sensuous living um, and this it, it, here, it's, it covers like um, massage, um, there's some oils in there that you can make, some edible uh, dusting powder, uh, there's a little bit on tantric sex, and just literally all sorts of things just to, you know, help you, to inspire you and get your mojo back. And that, that's a menopause secret book, that's just one section in there that you may find helpful. Um, and then you could use, try macaroot. I know uh, quite a lot of you are... Um, you, you know about macaroon you're probably taking it already it actually helps to it's a peruvian root that helps to balance hormones naturally but it's also used as a uh, as an aphrodisiac so you could try that maybe that might help and also um lots of different lubricants that you can try um the one from um the phytomone they do an intimate moisturizer don't know whether you've seen that it's called secret essence that's a blend of i think it's got about 20 different natural oils all totally natural uh, no parabens no mineral oils all very natural and um just to help um intimate moisturize basically um and then hrt obviously if you're taking hrt you probably won't be having these symptoms or if you do probably not too severe so those are a few things that you can do for that. Um, menopause happens in your 50s is the next one. Um, now, I mentioned this before, the average age to reach menopause is around about 51, 52, when your periods stop. Um, perimenopause 
uh, can begin as early as 35. Most women don't connect it to menopause at that early stage, far too early. It's normally around about 40, 45 that people start to uh, notice things changing. Um, some women are as early, sorry, my nose is too, uh, as early as 30 can reach menopause or as late as 60. Um, if you reach menopause, if you've gone for your 12 months or your 24 months before the age of 45, that's considered to be an early menopause. If it happens before the age of 40, that's considered a premature men menopause. Um, many different reasons why this happens. Obviously, ovaries are, are not working properly for whatever reason. Uh, it could be genetic, you may have had an infection at some stage, or you may be having medical treatments such as chemotherapy or something. So there's a great website actually, if, you, if this is you, if you can relate to this, if you've gone through an early menopause, um, there's a great website, it's called Daisy Network, and it's daisynetwork.org. UK. So do check them out. They specialise in early menopause and I'm sure there will be a lot of women on there uh, that you can connect with or relate to and they can answer your problems specifically. So do have a look at that. Um, number nine is menopause only lasts for a few years. <laughs> well, I think... We, we, we probably all entered menopause thinking, oh yeah, this is this is, you know few hot flushes and a couple of years will all be over. How wrong were we? Um, here we are, years and years later, still going through it. Um, it's not true, obviously. I think that when we start to get those early menopause symptoms in perimenopause, that, that's the transition, that's us transitioning through our menopause journey. We reach menopause and then once you've reached menopause, you are post-menopause for the rest of your life, and that's it. But if I can just qualify that, because if, if you're having lots of symptoms now, they do calm down. You're not going to stay like that forever. They do calm down. Once you're post-menopause and your hormones have stopped being so erratic and they are sort of found their equilibrium, they do calm down. But in post-menopause, remember that you are now living with really low levels of estrogen, progesterone. And that will have a long-term effect on your bone health and your heart health. So you need to take extra care of that. Um, but menopause is not a two-year affair. It's not a four-year affair. It, it is a journey that we're on. Once you start it, um, it that, that is it. So it, it, doesn't, it doesn't end. Um, the symptoms get better, for sure. So please don't... Please don't think I'm the bearer of, of bad news because you, it does get better. Um, but like I say, the, the menopause ending bit is a little bit of a misnomer because once you are post-menopause, that's it for the, for the rest of your days. Number 10, every woman has hot flushes. Well, I think if whenever you mention menopause, I think in the same sentence, hot flushes will come up. They are pretty much the hallmark of, of menopause, aren't they? Um, and every woman again experiences them differently um some women may have them just for a few months other women will have them for years and years you know like i said earlier um they, they, it, every woman's different there was actually a study done not long ago on 225 um menopausal women that went through menopause naturally and i'm just checking here's 80 percent reported moderate to severe hot flushes 17% had um, only mild hot flushes, and then a lucky 3% didn't have hot flushes at all. So most of us do get them without a shadow of a doubt, um, but for a few, um, they're not too bad, and some of us don't get them at all. It's not fair, you know, all, everybody gets menopause differently. Who knows what card you're going to be dealt, but then, you know, life's not fair, is it? We've just got to get on with it and deal with it. Whatever menopause brings for you, that's your personal menopause journey, and your friend may sail through it, and um, so be it. Uh, the last one, number 11. There's no difference between natural menopause and surgical menopause. Well, surgical menopause, I'm talking about if you've had a hysterectomy, if you've had your ovaries removed, your uterus, your cervix, then you're pretty much going to go into menopause overnight, straight away, basically, because it um, dramatically alters your blood flow and the production of hormones, so you'll be thrown into menopause overnight. If you've had a partial hysterectomy and you've kept your ovaries, um, 
then it may be a little bit more up and down, a bit more erratic. Um, but with a natural menopause, obviously it's a lot slower. The transition is over many years. It's up and down. Like you know, it can begin as early as 35, um, but you won't notice it probably until you're about 40, 45. So there is a difference between um, surgical menopause and natural menopause. And that's it. That's my top 11 menopause myths. Um, I hope you've sort of been able to relate to some of them. I hope it sort of helped you a little bit. Um, if there's anything that you've taken, ne next week I will do that, that list um, of natural remedies. Uh, if there's anything that you've taken that you've found helpful, do let me know. Put it in, in the suggestion, the comment box below, because I could take a look at it and we could maybe um, include it in the talk next week. Um, so with that, I will love you and leave you. I hope you have a good week. It looks like, I've just seen the forecast, it looks like we're in for some good weather for a couple of days. So I hope you manage to stay cool and have a good week. And I look forward to seeing you again next time. Thanks for joining me. Bye-bye.